Today's Bible reading will be taken from Romans 8, 28 to 32. Romans 8, 28 to 32. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? 32. He who do not spare his own son, but delivered him up from us all, and how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? May the Lord bless this reading and keep it in our hearts in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we bless your holy name for another day in your presence. Thank you for the gift of life and more importantly, the salvation of our soul. Glory be to your name in the highest in Jesus' name. Lord, as your word come forth right now, let it come with power, let it come with anointing, let it come with grace. Sanctify my lips in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah El Shaddai. Your word, as it come forth now, let it not return to you void. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today, we are looking at appointments in disappointments. Appointments in disappointments. Our text, as earlier read, is Romans chapter 8, verse 28 to 32. Romans 8, 28 to 32. And the key part of that passage is actually Romans 8, 28. All things work together for the good of those who loved him and are called by his name. Amen. The Bible is awash with stories of men and women who overcame obstacles. They bounced from setbacks, comebacks. And beyond Bible times, I'm sure you may have modern stories of those who met their appointment in a disappointing situation. In other words, they met their appointment in disappointment. Or people or businesses who moved from setbacks. Backs. The internet is replete with corporate turnaround stories like Apple, FedEx, Airbnb, General Motors, Starbucks, just to mention a few. Apple, for instance, almost went bankrupt until Steve Jobs rejoined to make the company what it is today. That's a great comeback story. And I'm sure if you go on the internet, you will see that of General Motors, of Starbucks, of FedEx, Airbnb, and others who from setback came back, who from positions of disappointment met their appointment, so to say. In sports, some of us may remember the comeback of Liverpool FC. By the way, I'm not a fan of Liverpool, but that uh, a match in 2005 was a remarkable story. In Istanbul, UEFA Champions League the final. The team came back from 0-3, a position of disappointment from a setback at halftime to level at 3-3 at full time. They went into penalty and then Liverpool won the UEFA Championship League final of that year, 2005. 
for those who are Nigerians and old enough, you also have remember the miracle of Daman, or what they call today the Daman miracle in 1989. When Nigeria came back from 04, a lost position, a position of setback, a position of disappointment, equalized for all against the then United, uh, USSR, now Russia and some other uh, USSR states uh, then. And like Liverpool also went on to win on penalties after equalizing. They went on to win the under 17 World Cup in that year. What a, what a comeback. That will be your story. You too will come back your present setback, if any, and disappointment in the name of Jesus. So we're looking at appointment in disappointment. You will meet with your appointment in whatever disappointment you may be experiencing right now, today, in Jesus' name. Let's look at some examples in the Bible, some examples of setback to come back or disappointment to appointment. And the first one that comes uh, uh, to my mind is the lost donkey. That story of the lost donkey you can find in 1 Samuel chapter 9, the whole chapter up to 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 2. 1 Samuel 9 to 1 Samuel 10, verse 2. It's the story of Saul. Saul and a servant of his father, they went in search of some lost donkeys. They passed through several lands in search of these lost donkeys without success. It got to a time that Saul actually told the servants, let's go back before our father, my father begin to look for us and they are worried. You know, so they were very disappointed. So he was about to turn back. So like I said, his father won't be worried. When his servants, and that's very key, the servant that went with him suggests, suggested rather that they seek divine help. What another servant? It's like the servant in the house of Naaman asking him to seek divine help to cure his leprosy. In this case, the servant that was appointed with Saul to go and search for the lost donkeys was the one that suggested divine help. Now, unknown to Saul and the servants, divine promotion was waiting for Saul. If you read the entire story up to chapter 10, verse 2, Saul was appointed and anointed as king over Israel. That is one appointment in disappointment. And as the story goes, the lost donkeys were actually eventually found. But what God did was to orchestrate Saul's appointment to become king, even in a situation of appointment, at least so it seems. Another story is the story of Ruth. In the book of Ruth, chapter one to chapter four. Just to recap, Ruth um, and the family went to another country where there was plenty then because there was famine in their land. But Ruth lost her husband with Opa another of um, another wife, so to say, because Ruth and Oprah are wives of their husbands, sons of Naomi. They eventually died and they came back to their nation. But in the process, as the story goes, Ruth and Oprah were asked to return back, to stay back in their land, in their land, or Ruth, a widow, clave with her mother-in-law. 
in the midst of her sorrow and disappointment. She understood that there's a sea in her disappointment. It's, that's what it turned out to be. And waited to see the appointment embedded in that disappointment. She offered the following profound words in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. Ruth 1, 16 and 17. But Ruth said, do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. And that's very significant. He had recognized the God of Naomi as the God to follow. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. Roots stuck with her mother in law to serve her God, did not return as the other lady, the other woman, Oprah did. Amen. Where is the appointment in this story, you might ask? If we read Ruth chapter 4, that's the last chapter in Ruth, verses 13 to 22, and Matthew chapter 1, verse 6 to 16, you will see that Ruth, Ruth married Boaz and fathered Obed. Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David. And if you read through, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, came through that genealogy. Ruth chapter 4, verse 21 says, Salmon fathered Boaz, Boaz fathered Obed. Verse 22, Obed fathered Jesse, and Jesse fathered David. I mean, you would get a full picture if you read 13 to 22 of Ruth chapter 4. But let's look, just pick some verses in Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. And Salmon, the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz, the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of David, the king. And David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah. That's Matthew chapter 1, verse 6. Now let's jump to verse 16, because if you go to Matthew chapter 1, 6 to 16, again, it started by recounting the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And verse 16, the last verse in that passage, 1 to 16, 6 to 16, I beg your pardon, said, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called Christ. What's the appointment in the disappointment of Ruth, losing her husband, having to return back to the land of her husband with her mother-in-law? True Ruth and her disappointment, but commitment to her mother-in-law and the God that she served, she became appointed in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. That is, Jesus Christ in flesh had the gene of roots and boas in him. So you could see that there is an appointment in that disappointment. So I will say to you today, Look beyond your disappointment and continue your undivided loyalty to God Almighty, who has good thoughts towards you to give you an expected end. Look beyond your current circumstances and situation. Look beyond your current disappointment. Something good is going to come out of it. Romans 8:28. Again, 
all things work together for the good of them that love God. Hallelujah. And are called by his name. The question is, do you love God? Continue to love him. Continue to serve him. And as long as you do so, all circumstances, negative or bad, they will work together for your good in Jesus' name. The other instance we want to look at is the book of Esther, the entire book of Esther, the history of Esther, how she became queen, how the children of Israel were to be uh, annihilated, how they overcame the plots, you know, against Esther's uncle, Mordecai, how Haman ended up being hanged. The entire story is a story of disappointment or setback that became a comeback. Because in that story, the Jews, the children of Israel, became the favored one. The book of Esther chronicled the setback of the children of Israel in exile and their comeback. Although the word God was not mentioned in the entire book, but it was obvious God was at work throughout the book. It may appear God is not present in your current situation and disappointment, but be rest assured, God is at work in your life and in that situation. He says your wall is constantly before him. God is at work. There's a, there's a worship song, I can't remember the, uh, the name of the artist. He said, hello God, in other words, where's your face? Are you there, Lord? And you may be in a situation like that today, and you're asking, God, where are you? Where are you in this situation? Be rest assured, he is walking. He is watching your back. He that keepeth Israel never sleep nor slumber. When the disciples were in the ship and the storm came, even though Jesus Christ was there, asleep, so to speak, on a, on a pillow, according to the word of God, they cried, Jesus, do you care that we perish? He woke up, calmed the storm, and rebuked them, thou of little faith. What you need to do in that situation is to give God, trust him, hold on to your faith. The just shall live by faith and see God turn things around for you. Like we declare in a statement in church, we said, we believe that things are turning around for us. Things are turning around for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So everything will work together for your good. Just wait for it. There is an appointment in that situation. Wait for the manifestation. We soon laugh. In Jesus' name, amen. Another story is the lost axe head. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 to 7. If I summarize that short passage, the sons of the prophets told the prophet Elisha to say where they stay is too straight, it's too narrow. They need to go and cut some beam and then build a bigger place. But they ask him to follow them. If he will not follow them, they will not go. It's like saying, God, if you're not going to follow me, if your presence will not abide with me, then don't let me go. But as they were confelling the beam, the axe head fell. What an embarrassment. What a disappointment. You need wood, you need beam to construct a house. You borrowed an ax. The ax head fell into the water. But thank God, the sons of the prophet asked Elisha to follow them, like I said earlier on. The point here, the ax was borrowed. The ax, as we all know, was a heavy metal, so it's not going to float. It sunk to the bottom of the water. The wooden part that is left in the hands of that particular son of the prophet is useless without the axe head. What does the axe 
axe head represents for you. The axe head represents our productive edge. It's our battle axe, it's our instrument of office, it's our productive edge. And when you lose that, all hope is lost. In this situation, it was a, it was a situation of embarrassment and disappointment. Indeed, he said. But God's presence was there. A miracle happened. Cut some wood and obeyed the instruction of the prophet and the axe head swam back, came to the surface. My prayer to you this day, you too will recover your axe head. Whatever is stolen or missing or has dropped off your hand, will be recovered again in Jesus. So if we ensure God's presence around us always, we can be rest assured he will help us recover all that we may have lost, including all that represent our access in the mighty name of Jesus. So those are a few instances. There are many more. There's the story of Peter. You know, there's the story of David, who was uh, distressed when they took his wives, his children captive. And he cried to the extent that even his, his followers wanted to stone him, he encouraged himself. Peter toiled all night without catching any, any fish until Jesus Christ intervened. There are many other stories, but I believe the ones we have highlighted today will demonstrate the fact that in any setback, there is a comeback. In any disappointment, there is an appointment. Or, according to the title of this message, appointment in disappointment. How do you handle, how do we handle disappointment? Number one, let's thank God for it. That might look strange, but that's God's word. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In all things, in all circumstances, we are to give thanks. The Bible says that is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. Number two, after thanking God for that situation, because every disappointment, every setback has a seed in it, a seed of comeback. It will look for that seed in that situation. We know how to, we should know how to discover opportunities in negative circumstances or situation. Those comeback stories mentioned earlier on, the guys that revived the companies or the team that revived the company will probably have done a, 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 what they call a SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats of that situation. And they look for the opportunities in that situation and exploit the opportunity, which is the third point. Have a look at the seed in the negative situation or situations. Knowing fully well that problems lead to discovery, for example, the light bulb will never have been discovered if darkness was not a problem. But there was no issue with darkness. If perhaps God has put the bulb in our eyes, that as long as there's darkness, the, the bulb in our eyes just shine. Nobody will think about discovering a bulb. But because it was a problem, the, the light bulb was discovered. Most inventions that we see today solves one problem or challenge for the other. So we need to look for the seed in that problem or in that situation. And number three, exploit the opportunity as soon as possible. Procrastination and complacency, like we saw, I think last uh, uh, Sunday, is the enemy of breakthrough, is the enemy of success, is the enemy of progress. Problems are not designed to last for long. They are meant for a little while. 
That's why 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10. And I read, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Problems don't last long. In the problem, identify the seed. Identify the opportunity and exploit that opportunity. Come back for the appointment that God has for you. And that will be your story. That will be your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Lastly, divine connection in turning disappointment into appointment. Divine connection in, set, I mean, in, in turning setback to comeback. All the examples we have looked at today, the lost donkeys, the story of roots, the borrowed tax head, and the entire story of the children of Israel in ex ex exile, according to the book of Esther, all have a divine connection. Thank God, you and I are divinely connected because we know and have Christ as Lord and Savior. You are divinely connected if you know and have Christ as your Lord and Savior. And it will help you recover from any setback. However, you are the mercy of the devil if you don't know Jesus Christ personally. John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, The thief come not but to steal, to destroy, and to kill. But I have come, talking of Jesus, to give you life in abundance. Now, the good news is, Jesus Christ is waiting, always waiting, for you to open the door of your heart to him, so that they can begin a relationship with you. That's the good news. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says, Behold, talking of the Lord Jesus Christ, I stand at the door and knock. The door of your heart, Christ is knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him, eat with him, and he with me. Today, if you are hearing his voice knocking at the door of your heart as a sinner who needs grace for salvation, Jesus is beckoning on you today. I was one there before because all have seen, the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, and fall short of the glory of God. And Romans 6, 23 says, the wages of sin is dead, but the free, to, free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus is inviting you today. Accept him as Lord and Savior of your life. Then you will be divinely connected to him. And he will begin to turn every disappointment you may have, every setback in your life, he will begin to turn it around to come back to a position of appointment in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for your word. I pray for all your children out there listening to me who are in one difficult situation, position of setback and disappointment. I pray, O oh Lord, because they are divinely connected to you. I ask, O oh Lord, that you will bring them to come back you will let them see the appointment in their disappointment in the name of Jesus. And for those who do not know you as of today, and they are ready to come to you, and they are saying, Lord, forgive my sin. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. Your word says, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He will never cast, you never cast anyone that comes to you out. I pray, oh Lord, that you receive this one. 
into your fold today as they surrender their life to you in Jesus' name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have prayed that prayer of salvation, if you have opened your heart to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life, you, the, the, the information that will be displayed after this message contains an email. I think it's office at winnerswaylouting.org. Contact us even for further prayer, for questions, or for any queries that you may have. And there'll be somebody waiting to, to answer you and to counsel with you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great and wonderful day. Shalom. <laughs>